Yeah, Javon, that man, 32-year-old Antoine Green, is charged in the murder of his father. Police say he allegedly used a sharp object in the killing. Even with the help from FEMA, the Norwich Public Works Department still has a sizable budget gap. A reaction from the courtroom today from the family was that of extreme disappointment. Disappointment because they thought the judge set the bail too low. The calendar may say hello spring, but it sure feels a lot like winter. Now this fire burned for hours. Many of these residents were home when it all happened, and many are lucky to be alive tonight. And in fact, there are many cars like this all across campus. And just last week, there have been fatal shootings on college campuses in Texas and Arizona. He is now being held on a $1 million bond and is scheduled to appear in Superior Court in Norwich tomorrow. Live in Colchester, Mike Kravesick, Fox, Connecticut. Mike. Well, Sarah Louise Borges, the pastor of a largely Brazilian congregation, answered a Craigslist ad to purchase a cell phone for his son. Borges and the two men agreed to make the exchange right outside the pastor's church, and that's when the unthinkable happened. He doesn't remember much. He's just in a lot of pain. Kayla Alexandre still has a hard time grasping what happened to her father. Luis Borges, the longtime pastor at First Assembly of God Church, wanted to buy an iPhone for his son since today was Peter Borges's 15th birthday. He just wanted to get something nice for me, something I've been asking for a while. The 54-year-old pastor happened to be at a baby shower at his new Park Avenue church along with his son and daughter. So they decided to meet the two men from Craigslist here yesterday afternoon. His son even waited with the men for a few minutes while dad went home to get $400 to buy the phone. We were just, just hanging out, talking about the phone. And when the pastor came back, he snapped this picture on his cell phone just to be safe. You can see one of the suspects in a gray sweatshirt. He said, oh, this is the, this is the receipt for buying the phone. And um, I don't think they were paying attention to him. And like, you just hear the camera click and just, he just smacks him and he falls to the ground. The boys went that way. My brother was in shock. I was in shock. I was just holding him, screaming. Tonight, Hartford police say they've identified the man in the gray hoodie. They say he took the money and phone from the pastor, while the other suspect ran up and punched Borges in the head, knocking him to the ground. Well, he hit his head really hard, and he, he was knocked out. Borges suffered head injuries from the assault, including bleeding in the brain, but doctors say he will recover. As for his assailants, which the family describes as teenagers, have not been caught. A crime so unimaginable and folding right in front of the eyes of loved ones. He didn't deserve this at all. He's a really kind and gentle and caring person. The investigation continues. Hartford police say a witness saw both of the men get into a car and drive away from the scene. People are encouraged to use the Hartford Police Department as a safe point for Internet transactions like Craigslist, in part because in 2013, a 40-year-old man was murdered in the capital city while trying to sell two T-Mobile tablets. Mike Kravcik, Fox, Connecticut. Fox 61's Mike Kravcik has the story. The arraignment docket at line number six. 20 year old Jesse Lopez appeared in Bristol Superior Court facing multiple charges after police say Lopez made no attempt to stop his SUV after hitting a couple crossing Pine Street last night. He did uh, allegedly strike these two people. He left these two people in the roadway uh, after they were injured. The couple from Bristol suffered injuries at remaining Hartford Hospital, both in stable condition. In this security footage obtained by Fox 61, the man and woman seen in a wheelchair were crossing the street after leaving a Dunkin' Donuts together. Several cars whiz by at first, and then the vehicle driven by Lopez hits them out of nowhere. Just hit them, kept going, and just, that's scary. A witness with a detailed description of the suspect's vehicle led police to this apartment building in Plainville. This morning they told me the cops come over here. It was in the rear parking lot of this building where an officer spotted Lopez's 2003 Chevy Trailblazer 
Police say security footage showed Lopez behind the wheel as he pulled in. Officers started questioning people that lived inside the apartment building and eventually found four people who said they were in Jesse Lopez's car and that he was the driver. When Lopez was questioned by police, he told them he was intoxicated and had no idea how he got here to Plainville. We never know uh, because you left the scene of the accident. That is something we can look into. Prosecutors say Lopez continued to deny any involvement in the crime, even as he was taken into custody. No one will take responsibility of their actions until they get caught. And that's how it is. Jesse Lopez is now out on bond and is due back in court in two weeks. Uh, December 11th, please. He had no previous criminal record, but now the several misdemeanor charges he faces could increase to felony charges. In Bristol, Mike Kravcik, Fox 61 News. Fox Connecticut's Mike Kravcik is live at Wesleyan with the latest. Mike. Javon, two uh, students have been airlifted to Hartford Hospital, both in critical condition, two others in serious condition. All 12 students overdosing on the synthetic party drug known as MDMA, also known as ecstasy or Molly. At 11 o'clock this morning, Wesleyan students were first notified. Three people were hospitalized with symptoms of overdosing on Molly. Two students, including a sophomore, are in critical condition tonight. Yeah, I think everyone's pretty shocked. The total number of hospitalized students rose throughout the day. Three more admitted in the afternoon and even more this evening. Eight were transported by ambulance, mostly from two groups of undergraduate dorms. Some people seem to have been transported this morning because they weren't feeling well when they woke up, and then some others were transported last night. Middletown police say the students may have ingested a similar form of the illegal substance known as molly, often taken as a capsule. The drug can last up to six hours, and it's not uncommon for people to take a second dose before the first kicks in. Obviously, it's a pretty big deal to have that many students get so hurt by something. One student was transported from the address of the Eclectic Society, a former front house now themed housing for co-ed students and Wesleyan's creative campus. One student tells us a concert was held here Saturday night. There's no drinks there or anything. It's just music and you go to hang out. Yeah. The university would not comment on whether the students had been together or at a party or just where the drugs had come from. It was definitely like some drug that was sold as something else and like it's just like we don't really, it's like difficult to get information as to what happened. Police say their biggest priority is to get more information on this batch of molly that was distributed around campus last night. They say getting that information will be crucial into helping the recovery of all these students that have been affected. If you have any information, you're urged to contact the university or Middletown Police Departments. Live in Middletown, Mike Kravcik, Fox, Connecticut. It took a while for crews to contain this fire. It was also tough for water tankers to reach the scene, but luckily nobody was hurt. The fire started on top of a ridge in the Nepog State Forest around 1 o'clock this afternoon. But you're going in on this side. Right the smoke could be seen from miles away. Maybe an eighth of a mile away. It was even closer. Real close. For Paul Gurdon. His home is on top of a hill at the edge of the forest. Because this was all smoked this morning. You couldn't even walk through here. One of this Winchester's ATVs is going to be staying up there because they got water on there. The command post at Satan's Kingdom in New Hartford, oh, that's right. about a mile from the site of the fire, bustled with activity throughout the day. Okay, Roger. It took 15 different fire departments from Hartford and Litchfield counties to battle the flames. This is 44. And getting close to the fire was work in itself. You're talking very uh, rugged terrain up there, rocks and hills, and uh, a lack of water. First responders traveled by ATV up the miles of trails in the forest. And then many had to walk, in some cases up to three miles to get close. Beautiful day for a walk. The Nepog Forest, which sits between routes 44 and 202, ended up with 15 acres of its forest burned because of this fire. For Litchfield County is uh, a considerable size for us. Car three of the trail. It took about six hours for the fire to be contained and state environmental officers are investigating how it started. But some believe campers here last night forgot to extinguish their campfire. So it's a nice spot, but unfortunately they left and they didn't put the fire out. 
This all happened not too long after the statewide forest fire danger level was set at very high this morning. One factor was high wind gusts at one point reported at more than 25 miles an hour. Mike Krafsik, Fox, Connecticut.